Good morning. I will take some time to uh, explain the lesson learned from the pilot Italian campaign on HIV self-testing. I am Lella from Fondazione Lila Milano, which is an Italian NGO that has been uh, active for over 30 years on uh, HIV and other STIs issues. And uh, so I'll explain you a little bit about our action, the pilot action, uh, which was part of uh, the zeroing project that you heard about a couple of times already during this uh, webinar. So it was uh, part of this uh, project together with uh, AIDS Action Europe and COGA test. So the objectives of this uh, pilot were to make people who live in Italy aware of the availability and possibility of HIV self-testing through a promotional campaign and to remind them, uh, of course, of the importance of HIV testing. This is because during the COVID lockdown, uh, lockdown and the entire, let's say, 2020, uh, many people were calling our helplines and they were uh, asking where to go to get tested because you know that COVID had a very uh, bad impact in Italy. We had a lot of cases and uh, the infectious disease hospitals were dedicated, totally dedicated to the COVID emergency. And we as uh, community services for the first three, man, uh, three months were completely closed. And uh, afterwards, we started back offering testing services with a specific protocol and only by appointment. So people had uh, difficulty in getting a test for HIV if they wanted to in that period. And we found out when they called us that they did not know of the availability of self-tests in Italy, uh, which became available in pharmacies at around the 25 euros since uh, December 1st, as a uh, World AIDS Day 2016, there were um, information in the newspaper and uh, TV in that period, but then nobody else uh, uh, talked about it and people did not know they were available in pharmacy, uh, pharmacies and uh, if they had not called us during that period, they would not know that they could get, uh, that they could uh, self-test. Then another objective was to bring uh, those who do not access public or community testing services to undertake the HIV self-test uh, by delivering uh, free testing kits to their homes. And if they wished so, to support them uh, through remote counseling services. So they could book a telephone call or a WhatsApp connection to uh, take the test, let's say, together with one of our counselors. We had a target of uh, 1,500 people to take a self-test uh, for HIV during this pilot project, uh, thanks to this new service between May 22, uh, 2022 and June 2023. So the project is still ongoing and will uh, end uh, in a month. Uh, another objective was collect uh, anonymous social demographic, uh, demographic data and testing history, attitude and preferences of people reached by the service, and also to collect uh, key performance indicators. So the proportion of people new to testing, the uptake within a key population, rates at, uh, of tests undertaken under supervision and reactivity and di uh, diagnosis rates, and also rates on linkage to care. We will see uh, during this presentation, which indicators we were able to collect and which we did not collect because uh, we could not get uh, some of the information that we uh, hoped to be able to connect. And then another uh, objective was to conduct an external evaluation of this pilot program in order to assess uh, the program effectiveness, uh, success and challenges. So, Prior to launching this service, uh, we dedicated the first four months to design and produce the promotional campaigns, which was a key step to make people aware of the possibility to self-test and the availability of this uh, new service. 
which we called just Lila, like uh, just uh, just eat the delivery you know, service for food. And the campaign was given to Diversity, which is a nonprofit communication agency which uh, works on the issues of diversity. So it, they're special to us. To create uh, the dedicated Just Lila landing page within Lila's website uh, with a lot of uh, features. So the info section on HIV and testing for HIV, a tutorial on how to self test, the facts section, anonymous social demographic data collection form, the order form, a privacy policy. So we had to work a lot on the uh, landing page. Establish contacts with the different media in order to plan the launch of the communication campaign and the different modes and timing of its dissemination, and which was done together with Lila at national level. Uh, we are Lila Milano, but we have other uh, Lilas around Italy. To develop the necessary monitoring and evaluation tools and organize the workflow for the delivery of the self test kits in detail and to develop a post-test questionnaire to collect data on clients' overall experience and satisfaction with the service. And then we trained the counseling team on remote pre- and post-test uh, counseling because we had never uh, run that service and subsequent linkage to care steps and tools. We contacted for each region and for each uh, province uh, hospitals to uh, have a personal uh, contact with doctors and eventually refer people to their, uh, to their hospital during uh, the sessions. So uh, all of the work that we did, uh, I, I, I like to say, and I'll repeat it, uh, if anybody is interested, can be shared, of course, by translation uh, to other organizations that might be interested to replicate somehow this uh, campaign and this experience. Uh, I'll try to show, I think I succeed, the promotional video of the service. Is it directly at your home? No, sorry, <laughs> I cannot, I don't know how to go on now. Okay, <laughs> you have seen the video. We try to use uh, non-dramatic, joyful uh, messaging to, uh, to make testing uh, easy. And uh, you see now here, that we dedicated a lot of work to the launch of the campaign, which was launched at the end uh, uh, of May last year. We had uh, prepared uh, promotional uh, uh, messages for Instagram and for Facebook, and uh, so that to inform our people uh, widely, we used also uh, paper media and uh, we try to reach uh, the highest number possible. We had, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we spread the news as much as we could. And we also measured the coverage of uh, the first, uh, this is the first day, I think, or first week results obtained uh, with the first Instagram ads with the budget to see how also uh, it costed to, reach a certain number of people and the targets. We also had influencers uh, involved, uh, which uh, posted uh, in their, I don't know, stories uh, in, uh, on Instagram, uh, messages about how good it was to receive the testing kit at home trying to, and of course they had a lot of followers. And so we reached uh, also people through, through them because we thought it was important to um, involve people this way. 
Uh, as you see, this uh, has the logo of Lila, this big package, but uh, in, the video, in the video, it was clear that uh, you receive uh, at home a plain package without Lila, because some people uh, which, are, uh, which have a fear of stigma might uh, not like to receive something branded with the logo of, uh, an, uh, of an association of an organization uh, which works on HIV AIDS. And so we also had that attention. So people received the plain white envelope with the kit and uh, with the materials. This is a, a, a brochure that uh, went together with the kit where we explained uh, uh, in a summary what is HIV, how it is transmitted, the rules for safer sex, uh, that testing is the only way to find out if you have uh, HIV, that there are uh, ERVs that, can, uh, uh, that allow you to live uh, uh, a healthy life, and uh, what you needed to do if uh, your uh, self-test uh, got a reactive result. Another big uh, work was done to develop the landing page. When we wrote the project uh, for the funder, we thought that we would do many things over telephone. But as I commented before the meeting with Anise, we learned uh, about uh, during one of these uh, type of webinars that we're having now, we learned about a very good project of uh, uh, HIV Ireland from the Irish colleagues that they had uh, implemented a good uh, uh, project on uh, self-testing delivery and we punctuated many of their uh, um, ideas to build our landing page and so everything was done online and it became very easy. So this is the landing page where you can order the self-test, receive the test and do it on your own or with our help. So you see the order, the uh, kit uh, receipt, and then uh, uh, the self-test, the taking the self-test. And the message said that if you wish, we can help you and uh, you, can, uh, um, you can receive, you can book your uh, counseling uh, session with us if you want to be supported during taking this step, let's say. Uh, before taking the test, there was information saying, uh, telling about, explaining about the window period and uh, uh, giving the information that uh, 30 minutes before taking the test, uh, you should avoid eating, uh, drinking, smoking, uh, brushing your teeth, uh, and uh, so that people were aware and to avoid uh, invalid results. So uh, then by clicking the buttons, you could order the test, uh, book the support, and uh, access the fax session, the frequently asked sec uh, session, had uh, uh, replies on uh, what type of test uh, uh, will be delivered. And we choose to use the OraQuick uh, oral tests, which are easier than the finger prick tests in order to avoid the people uh, not being able to prick their fingers. How accurate is the test? How will the delivery be organized? Uh, what will you do with my data? Uh, which behaviors are considered at risk for HIV? What should I do if the self-test uh, gets a positive result? And uh, what about, uh, what, what should I do if I receive a confirmatory result? And then uh, there were also uh, links uh, to what is HIV and AIDS, uh, to prevention and transmission, HIV tests in general. So other information about uh, <coughs> HIV in general, which was, uh, linked uh, to the LILA website more in general. This is the uh, pre-order questionnaire. So in order to get some uh, so anonymous social demographic data from uh, people, we uh, had this um, session where we collected information about the gender, the age, the country of origin, uh, the region of residency, and uh, 
the type of uh, uh, place the people lived in. So either a big city or a rural area, a small village, a medium-sized city, just to see the reach of our service. <clears throat> then uh, how people learned about the service, uh, if they had used uh, such a service before, uh, why did they decide to, uh, to use, uh, utilize the service? When they had taken the last HIV test, why did they decide to take the test uh, this time? And then uh, there were some uh, questions about uh, risk factors and at-risk behaviors. Uh, so we asked if in the last 12 months uh, people had uh, uh, anal or vaginal sex uh, without the condom and uh, or uh, oral sex and uh, with uh, sperm in their mouths or they had uh, shared uh, injection uh, paraphernalia and also we had a question on prep if they knew uh, what it was and if they were on prep so this is the pre-order questionnaire and we have the data of all the people who filled in this part then the people had to switch to uh, click on another link, which is totally separate and not connected to this uh, session to keep the anonymity of the people. And uh, they were asked to fill in uh, their data because otherwise it would not have been possible to deliver them the self-test kits. So we asked for the name and last name and the address with all the details and also for the telephone and email. Telephone was uh, added uh, uh, after the first days because many people had uh, many uh, kits of the first kits were returned undelivered because the people were not at home, because the address was not complete, because there were some mistakes, and we wanted to avoid, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, throwing away kits. And the email was uh, uh, asked because after 15 days, if people gave consent to it, we sent them a post-test questionnaire to learn about their experience and to collect data on uh, yeah, the satisfaction they had with the service. Um, about 20% of the people never completed this, uh, as we will see afterwards, this session. We think that most of the people got uh, scared about uh, uh, getting all this data in detail, even if policy privacy, uh, the privacy policy explained in detail that this page would go separately and be deleted after 50 days. Uh, but probably there is a big issue with stigma because 20% 20, uh, 20 is not a, a small um, yeah, number. Um, this is the uh, session, uh, the section of the website of the landing page where you could book if you want, uh, wanted your appointment for getting support. And uh, after all this explanation, I can tell you how it went for this almost one year experience. So uh, the implementation of the new service uh, uh, took a very uh, actions and step. We had super, uh, we uh, had to supervise the service uptake by monitoring the website. So the number of people who filled in the order questionnaire, who uh, of those who have ordered the uh, the kits, who requested the remote counseling service and uh, the number of people who completed the post-test questionnaire. We had to take care of packages of envelopes containing uh, the materials and uh, the kits. We supervised uh, the delivery service by career and the solution of related issues. As I explained, uh, there were quite a few return packages and still we received uh, some return packages. And so we have to call and we have to try to deliver uh, by uh, solving these problems. Uh, we had to manage an, uh, the request of the remote counseling service and to deliver the counseling. We monitored uh, the data collected on client social demographics, the testing history, all the data collected uh, uh, 
uh, with the purpose of improving the service while ongoing <clears throat> and to adapt it uh, to make it better. We monitor the post-test questionnaire with the same purpose. And uh, we are conducted pre conducting presently uh, an external evaluation. Matthias is the external evaluator and he's uh, present in this moment listening to this, uh, to my presentation. And uh, there will be a discussion on service sustainability that we can start after this presentation, after the conclusion of the pilot project. You see here, uh, the data refers to the beginning of last week. We now are at around uh, 2,700 uh, people who completed the pre-order questionnaire. So you can see some of their social demographic data. I'm sorry that when I had the screenshot, you cannot, uh, I mean, I, I kept uh, this, uh, Salva pagina con nome, which should not be there, but we can try and read anyway this uh, slide. 57% of the people, of the respondents uh, uh, were male. Uh, curiously, at the beginning, uh, the uptake was uh, mostly by women, and then this changed over time. But we also had non-binary uh, people defining an, uh, as non-binary or M2S or people who did not want to define themselves. Uh, people, as you can see badly, but you still can see, are mostly very young people. Uh, the, between 25 and 29 and 20 and 24 make up almost, uh, almost for 50, uh, for 60 percent. And we also have the 3 percent of people which are a, a 18, 19 years of age. And of course, uh, most of the people are Italian, but we also had uh, some other, uh, some uh, uh, foreign nationals um, interested in the service. Uh, the region who um, had many requests uh, was uh, Lombardy, but also, of course, uh, it is a national uh, program, other regions, uh, uh, were interested, uh, are interested in the service. Uh, big cities make up for the most uh, of uh, the re uh, residency places of respondents, but as you can see, uh, villages, small cities, and uh, rural areas uh, uh, make up for almost 45% of uh, people, so we uh, could reach uh, people residing uh, in uh, places where there are no um, community services uh, for testing. Most of the people, 67% uh, of the people learned about the service uh, uh, through Instagram and anyway, uh, many other media, uh, uh, social media, but 51% uh, from friends or other known people. So there was also word of mouth. Uh, the reasons for choosing the uh, service, as you see, the first one is because it's free of charge, 58% of the people, but also because it's comfortable because, uh, for privacy and confidentiality for 36% of the people. And 25% uh, said they don't like to go to healthcare facilities, which is uh, something important as well. Uh, for us, the most interesting uh, data is uh, that 43% uh, of people had never tested before. So we, uh, we su are succeeding in reaching people who do not go to healthcare facilities, but also do not come to community-based uh, testing services. And they decided to take an HIV test uh, uh, either because they wanted to check their status or because they had run a risk for the most, 60% and 29%. And uh, they had uh, sexual relationship, I think I click on here, uh, with mostly with men and then uh, women. And the risk factors were oral. Uh, uh, Oral, 
uh, test uh, oral risks for um, oral sex for the uh, most people, and then uh, vaginal sex without condom and the anal sex without condom. Uh, only uh, one uh, uh, 45 people uh, were on PrEP, uh, but 27% uh, uh, of people do not know yet in Italy what is PrEP. This is uh, the, of course, I, uh, I made uh, the names hidden because we don't want to, uh, to give the names of the people who ordered the kits. But you can see that uh, 2,030 people as of last week ordered a self-test, which is uh, about 20% uh, less of the people who had completed the pre-test uh, questionnaire, which is what I was trying to say before. That, uh, there is a drop. Some people uh, did not uh, uh, complete uh, the order form. And uh, we received only 412 uh, uh, post-test uh, questionnaire. As you can see, uh, well, there are about, uh, let's say, 20% of the people uh, who received the test. There is a delay. Of course, they receive the email after 15 days if they gave consent. Uh, but then they can take uh, some uh, other time. So there might be more tests, but anyway, um, there are many people who did not let us know uh, their experience about self-testing. Anyway, uh, most of the people had a negative result. Uh, two pe uh, nine people had a non-valid result and two had a reactive result. Uh, only 11 uh, uh, people uh, received the remote uh, counseling services of those who um, have replied to this uh, question, eight by telephone and uh, three through a Zoom platform. Um, the people said that they did not uh, uh, need uh, uh, support because uh, it was easy to take the self-test on their own or they were uh, supported by a close person. Uh, all of the um, reports on uh, uh, the acceptability or uh, how do you say satisfaction with the service are very high because we have a very good or good as the first two and there are also, usually they get to 95%. The, the service in general, the way to order the self-test, the way to the, uh, the self-test delivery, uh, the instruction they received uh, to take the self-test, the ease of use of the self-test, the informational materials uh, that they received, the support received. I don't know why they uh, replied, uh, but they probably intended some other support. Also the information, uh, they found on the website, uh, which were quite uh, detailed. Uh, as you see, 99% would uh, uh, utilize, would use this service again. Which uh, way they would, uh, they prefer to take the test and 80% say they prefer to take the test at their place. Um, and uh, 78, 79% uh, they would order it again online. This is uh, the report. Uh, it's not complete of the uh, bookings of the uh, online uh, counseling of the remote counseling service. Some people booked and then the white ones did not show up the appointment they booked, either Zoom or telephone. The yellow one, the orange one uh, were performed and uh, all of the uh, Zoom, uh, all of the uh, remote counseling uh, happened uh, with uh, negative results. We did not have counseling with, uh, which resulted into a reactive uh, uh, result. So in conclusion, 
Self-test can be a valid tool to bring people who do not wish to access healthcare services or community services to take a test for HIV since 43.2% uh, of clients had never tested before. And increased knowledge about the availability of self-test kits will hope, hopefully help people to, who need to know their HIV status to take a test in case of future emergencies. Anonymity and confidentiality seems to be still an important aspect of self-testing services since 83% uh, percent of people did not complete or submit the order form after realizing they needed to disclose personal information in such detail. This service is mostly accessed by young people, 61.5 clients between 18 and 29 years of age. And Instagram is the most effective media for service promotion. 44.3% of clients live in small towns, villages, or rural areas, so we could reach people outside of the big cities. Only 32 people booked the remote counseling service. Of them, only 15 maintained the appointment and took the test, supported by LILA staff. All of their results were negative, and 11 of them filled in the post-test questionnaires, as we have seen. In total, 20.3% uh, clients filled in the post-test questionnaire. Two of them received a reactive uh, uh, result, but likely did not refer to a remote counseling service. I'm saying likely because maybe they called our counseling, service, uh, counseling services afterwards, received support from the linkage to care, but they did not say, if they did, that they had uh, received the reactive result during the self-test uh, performed on their own. 92% reported that the self-test kit was easy to use without support, and 6% uh, relied on the support of a close person. These as use uh, uh, informational materials and instructions were rated as very high. Uh, as we said, 99% of clients would do it again. 58% uh, uh, again I choose the service because it is free of charge. And in conclusion, the rate of client satisfaction is high, but the sustainability of such a service relies on sponsors and funding since cost of the kits and delivery are high. And a certain number of kits might be donated annually by the manufacturer com uh, company. The campaign promotional materials and website are available for translation and adaptation for those organizations that wish to start a similar service in their country. Uh, what I did not add here is that uh, we were not able to collect uh, information about vulnerable uh, groups because, uh, uh, and we thought that we'd not, uh, we could not reach the most vulnerable people, probably because uh, they would not even have an address uh, to, uh, for the delivery of the self-test kits, which is, uh, which is something very important in my opinion. Uh, but uh, um, it is uh, very uh, difficult to, to understand because uh, in, uh, by uh, our own choice, uh, we did not want to uh, include the information about uh, their let's say, uh, belonging to a vulnerable population in the pre-order uh, pre questionnaire. Uh, because we thought it, was, uh, it could be too invasive and uh, discourage. We started a new uh, project with uh, another donation by Aura uh, Quick, uh, and we offered uh, people self-test kits uh, to be uh, picked up at our LILA units, or we offer them during uh, uh, the Pride or during uh, World AIDS Day. And so that could be another way to reach vulnerable groups. Uh, the thing is that we were not able, and uh, I don't think it is possible as uh, demonstrated in other previous uh, presentation today, to uh, collect data on uh, linkage to care of these people and on the reactivity rates of self-testing. Finally, with this uh, slide, I wish to acknowledge AIDS Action Europe and the COBA Test Network, which uh, have been great partners to, coll to collaborate uh, with in the zeroing uh, in project. 
Diversity, the organization that uh, organized the, the campaign, the Aura Quick, the manufacturing company which granted a discount for the supply of the testing kits and donated additional kits to allow for continuation of the pilot action. And of course, the staff of Lila Milano and the other Lila units around Italy. So thanks uh, for your attention and I'm ready to discuss and reply to your questions. <laughs>